Well, we've been doing a uh, series called Encountering Jesus, stories from the book of Luke. And today, we're, the topic is, how your, how's your faith? It's from Luke 7, 1 through 17. What's happening is Jesus is kind of walking around, and these people come up to him. And they're people that know a, pe- a person, okay? It's not the actual person. It's someone that has sent somebody to go talk to Jesus. And the reason he sent somebody is because his job is that of a centurion. He's a Roman soldier. And in many cases, what, what that means is that he is a uh, part of the regime that all of these uh, Hebrew people are living under. So he's one of the bad guys, really. But he's also uh, considered a Gentile, someone that is not of the Hebrew faith. So he doesn't feel like he can be in the presence of this great teacher that's coming around, this great Jewish teacher that's coming around. So he sends some Jewish people to go and talk to Jesus. And they get up to him and they say, hey, we've been sent by this guy. Uh, there's a guy that works for him that is, is really sick. But this guy, his boss, the centurion, doesn't feel like he can be in your presence. He doesn't feel worthy of being a part of uh, your space there. So he has sent us to come and tell you that his servant is really sick and to ask you to heal him. Kind of an odd thing, isn't it? It's like sending, it's like the first email. You know, you just send, you know, and hey, can you get a prayer request Go on this way? And so Jesus is, is marveling at the person's faith. And so he starts to, to head forward, and then another group of people come that have also been sent by this guy just to verify, hey, He just doesn't feel worthy to be among you. But he knows. He's in charge of people, and he knows that if he tells them to do something, they'll do something. If he says march, they'll march. If he says move, they'll move. And so he knows that even by you not even visiting him, because you're not even, he's not worthy to even have you in his home. If you just say, be healed, I know that my servant will will be healed. And Jesus just marvels at this guy's faith. Imagine what the people around him are doing. Again, this is part of, this is the bad guy. You know, uh, in Star Wars, this would be a stormtrooper. Am I talking hip? Is this what it is, the, the Star Trek Star stuff? I'm a Star Trek guy, so. Uh, but this is someone that is part of the enemy, part of the things, and not just in that realm. This is a guy that is not of the faith. This is a guy that has been uh, part of a uh, another Uh, sometimes referred to as pagan religions, and he's telling Jesus, requesting him to come and heal his servant without even being in his presence. Imagine the second guessing that people are giving, like, you really, you're coming here? You're you're coming here? Uh, uh, Because I know where you're from, and you're coming here? You see, normally we we don't even talk together. If I saw you on the street, I would ignore you. And then later, I would say things about you. You're you're not part of our club. If we had a party, you would not be invited. We don't like you. You're not of us. You don't look like us. You don't act like us. You're not a part of us. Yeah, you're not worthy. You're not worthy of this. You're not even worthy to send people to come and tell Jesus that you're not worthy. And many of the people that follow Jesus are waiting for that answer of Jesus to stick it to them. There's been a lot of people that that, that's exactly what they hoped Jesus would do. Tell off the people that they wanted told off. Choose that authority to say, you're not part of us. We're the chosen people. You're not. I wonder if this sounds familiar. I wonder if this movement sounds familiar because as Christians, sometimes we're doing that today. As Christians, we almost try to handpick who is part of us and who's not part of us. We pray for ones and we refer to others as the enemy. The enemy. At one time, that was harsh words. Today, it's almost socially acceptable to refer to somebody as an enemy. They're waiting for a riot. They're 
They're waiting for this authority to tell them off. They're waiting for a little bit of pride moments where they can say that they are the chosen one and look, he just sent them on his way. We're in charge now. We have the power now. Spiritually, we have the power. That guy doesn't. But instead, Jesus says, I am, never have I seen faith like this. Never have I seen faith like this. He's healed. Your servant is healed. Now imagine if Jesus picked the other part of that and said, yeah, yeah, you know, you're not part of this and everything like that. Imagine the ripple effects that would have been part of that. He would have started some anger. Some people would have, filled, uh, would have, would have felt vindicated. They would have felt powerful in that moment. And meanwhile, a, a servant would have died. There is something about the faith in accepting somebody that has ripple effects. Just as there's something about not accepting somebody that has ripple effects. When we truly love our neighbor, when we say, I love you just, just exactly the way you are, we do not know the effect that that's going to have on the people that are surrounding you. Do we have the faith that Jesus could say, never before have I seen such faith? And for that matter, what is faith? Is faith expecting the result that you want? Because the people around Jesus may have been expecting something completely different. Their faith may have been in the fact that Jesus was going to go tell this guy off. And in that moment, their faith might have been shattered. Is this the guy that we want to follow? He just, he just welcomed this guy. Sometimes we jump ahead in our faith to the result when we forget the journey. And I believe that faith is a little bit about the journey. As, as many of you know, um, uh, uh, my background and, and my childhood was not, was not an ideal one. I, uh, there was uh, abuse in my family, and I didn't really have the uh, experiences that a lot of father-sons have. I see wonderful things happening with, uh, with parents and their children here. It's, it's beautiful. I, I see uh, parents, you know, uh, taking their child by the hand, uh, having experiences with them. I, I, you told me about uh, uh, getting bikes for your kids. Beautiful, wonderful moments of celebration. A lot of those, I, I don't, they're a little foreign to me. I didn't, didn't really have those. And so when I had a son, I relied on, uh, I guess, faith. Also fear. I didn't know how to do certain experiences with, with my son. I didn't have that experience. And one day, it was, it was kind of actually like this. It was a little warmer outside but it was a spring day. And I thought, what do parents do? Because I didn't know. What do parents do with their, their child? I have this little person here. What am I supposed to do with it? Too young to put to work. <laughs> and I was at the store, and I saw uh, uh, almost like in an um, umbrella uh, stand holder were these, uh, these kites. I thought, oh, I wonder if we could fly a kite. And I looked for the, the right kite. There was my little pony. No, that wouldn't work. That's strawberry shortcake. I, I don't know if I'd be the guy that would show, you know, isn't that you I saw with the strawberry shortcake kite? I, you know, that's just too much to explain. So I found Superman. Oh, and it, it looked cool, you know, on the, on the cover. It looked awesome because it was, it was Superman. God bless you. It was Superman, and it was like a clear background. So I, the illusion was that if you flew it, it would look like Superman was flying above. I thought, hey, maybe I could do that with my son. 
Now, most of you know that when it comes to fixing something, uh, I'm not real gifted in that area. I, I'm not the guy that put these tables and chairs together. I'm the guy that encouraged people to put these tables and chairs together. Um, I vacuum this place from time to time, but I'm not the guy that put the vacuum together. I believe behind us, she is the guy that put that vacuum together. And when it comes to vacuuming, I really suck. <laughs> it's a vacuum joke. It's a vacuum joke. So even something like a kite, just, I was scared. I was scared that I was going to create an experience with my son that was going to turn out to be something more negative than positive. Uh, th because I was used to that with my childhood. And I brought it home, and I showed my son. He was about uh, four at the time. And he loved Superman because I raised him right. And we were so excited, and we, we laid all the pieces out on the table. And they had, like, plastic sticks and these little uh, uh, things and uh, string and all that stuff. And I thought, I'm over my head. <laughs> I can't do this. Seriously, I was that scared about it. And we looked at the instructions, and we got together, and we, uh, the table didn't work out for us, so we laid everything out on the floor. And together, we, we went over the instructions. And we, we put the pieces together. And for some miracle, uh, it became a kite. This piece of plastic became a kite. And we went to uh, a park here in, in Lincoln with an open field area. It was kind of like this little area right here. And believe it or not, I didn't know how you got a kite off the ground. I didn't know if you ran with it. I didn't know if you, I was hoping you could just uh, throw it up. I was looking for batteries and maybe just a start button. And so uh, we tried different things. We tried running with it. And for a while, it, it, it just wasn't working. It wasn't going, it, the wind would like throw it down to the ground. And I thought, I'm, I'm really failing as a father here. But my son wouldn't let me stop. He kept saying, let's try it again. Just, let's, let's just try it again, a four-year-old. And he would hold it as I would run with it, and he'd, he'd run behind me. We looked ridiculous. But at one time, he let go at it just the right time. And it took off. And we started uh, letting more string out. And it was amazing. Just like the package, it looked like Superman was flying above us. And we spent hours there watching this kite. Mainly because I didn't know how to bring it back. But it was, I mean... And for me, when I look back and I think about faith, I think about that moment. I, I wanted to change the cycle that was in my family. My father had been abused. His father before that had been abused. Uh, for me, it was all about breaking that cycle with my son. I'm proud to say I never laid a hand on my son. But it was about creating experiences that I knew nothing about and putting my faith in love. Because I didn't know how to put the kite together. I didn't know what the, in the outcome would be of that kite. I didn't know uh, what the experience would be like. But I knew I loved my son. Still do. With faith, we may not always know the outcome, but it's with faith 
that keeps us taking one step in front of the other and trying new things. The centurion had all the odds against him. He was an outcast. He was the enemy. Having sent his people to go and talk to this person because he loved his servant. Now, love was all the things that he had to rely on. He didn't know the outcome. He didn't know what uh, would be. He didn't have to walk with every step of it, but he had faith enough to take one step in front of the other and to just rely on the wind. You see, when a kite soars, you have to rely on things you can't see. The wind. For a while there, you have to rely on even the string that you can't see because after it gets up there a while, you don't even remember, if it, you don't know if it's attached or not. Do we have the faith to continue that? Do we have the faith to put our trust in things that we can't see on the account of love? I was never the most perfect father, but I was a loving father. And it was love that made that fight soar. May we have that love of the centurion to not know the outcome, but to move on love. Because if we have faith in love, we have faith in God because they're one and the same. May we all feel the faith to make love soar above us like Superman. May we all do that.